Welcome to part two of our portrait shoot inspired by Martin Scholler. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we are editing an awesome image that we took inspired by great photographer Martin Scholler. In the last episode, we took you through the lighting that we did. Uh, we tried many different combinations of lighting. It looked horrible at the start, but in the end, we found something that we really, really like. So what we did is we're taking that image and now we're going to take it through post-production. We're going to show you some really cool things with dodging and burning, enhancing some highlights, a little bit of retouching. People have been asking us how we retouch guys. And uh, so we're going to cover that as well. And then we're going to be doing a tiny bit of color toning. So a lot of really cool things going on in this episode. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so here is our image. This is Chris and um, what we're going to be doing, let's just go ahead and talk about retouching first. Now, as far as retouching guys and retouching in general, I really don't like doing things that um, are necessarily permanent, that are a part of a person always. But little areas, you know, things like um, little uh, dimples and spots and things like that on people's skin that are going to go away in a week, I'm totally okay retouching those out. That's not really that big of a deal because if I photographed him a week later, he might not even have that spot. So that's the sort of thing that I like to take care of when I am retouching guys. Um, and to do that, usually the healing brush tool is the best way to do it. So I would hit J for your healing brush tool, and then you can basically create stamp. There's a spot healing brush tool, by the way, as well. Um, I don't recommend that tool. It's It chooses the sample point for you, and I think the healing brush tool is a little bit better. So we'll go with the healing brush tool, and what I wanna do is hold Alt or Option, click on the area of skin we like and just simply paint over the area of skin that we want to change. We actually just made an episode on the healing brush tool versus the clone stamp tool. So if you guys want to check that out, you can do that as well. It's a couple of days ago. All right. So we're just taking care of little th these spots, you know, nothing like major here. It's just a little things that are kind of getting in the way. Um, in general with retouching guys, I think it's a little bit more appropriate that guys get a little bit less retouching than um, women. Uh, the reason is, um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I think men who are like overly retouched to the point of like perfect skin and, you know, flawless features, to me, it looks a little bit contrived. It, it just does. It looks like, you know, I, it, it seems like, you know, the, the qualities that our Western society appreciates about men and women seem to be a little bit different. So retouching a man's portrait and a women's portrait, uh, the same way seems like, uh, kind of ignoring what our society seems as, uh, acceptable you know men are seen as more like masculine manly and like gruffy like you'll see a lot of portraits that have like you know um, facial hair and you know things like that um, so I think leaving that sort of thing is a really nice touch and it kind of adds to the society's norm of you know what <laughs> they expect to see in a portrait of a man but um, you can challenge the norms as well and make them you know flawless skin either also but I don't do flawless skin with women usually anyway too. So um, that's just my take on it. I tend to retouch guys uh, a lot less, like a lot less work on them than I do uh, women, but totally up to you guys. But we have gotten a lot of questions about that lately. So I figured I'd address it. Okay, so this is about as close to um, what I would do. Okay, the next thing I would, I'm gonna do is we're gonna target some of the, so that was just with the healing brush. You can see the before and the after just with the healing brush. You can still make a pretty cool difference. Now, the next thing we're going to do is target some of the redness in um, Chris's skin. And he's sitting right next to me, so I hope this is not offending you, is it, Chris? No. Okay, cool. Um, everyone has redness in their skin. I've, I've got it right now. That's just part of it. It's blood. It, especially during a photo shoot, it, it tends to come out a little bit more. So you can see it, you know, around the eyes here, you know, nose, um, cheek areas, and things like that. That's where it's going to come out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and target that area and then bring the redness down a little bit. Very cool technique. We're gonna grab an adjustment layer and I'm gonna go down to hue slash saturation. Okay, so we have our hue saturation slider. Now what I wanna do is, this is gonna seem weird, but I'm gonna crank, um, we're gonna go over here to our red channel. We're gonna grab our, um, grab our eyedropper and I'm gonna click around where the redness is. Okay, just, just click where you see a little bit the area that you wanna change. Now I'm going to crank my saturation and my hue like way up. Um, and this might look really weird. It totally does look weird. But the reason I'm doing it is to call attention to those areas, because now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to restrict the area that actually gets changed because you can see not just the red near his eyes has changed, but the red near basically his entire face. 
So to do that, what we're going to do is click over here. You'll see this uh, slider on the bottom, and this is basically your range of what is going to be um, affected by by your hue saturation change. So the area in the very middle, that's kind of like your hard line. Those are the definite areas that will get changed. And then out towards your edges, that is your feathering. So you can see it's starting to change. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that little gray area right in the middle, and I can kind of move this to the left or the right. And you can see, you know, right about there, that's what really where our redness is. If I go over here, we're starting to get, you know, some of the yellows and things like that in his face. So I'm doing this only so I can see the actual problem areas because it can be re relatively hard to know like, you know, is this it or is that it? You can see this area is affecting his whole face, whereas this area is really just targeting those red areas. Okay, so I know it's a totally weird technique. We're not gonna keep this green. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this saturation back down to zero, okay? And we're gonna bring this hue back to something that um, is closer to his skin tone. So here, this was at zero, which is a little bit red. We're gonna bring it a little bit to the right which is gonna add a little bit of yellow in there, and there we go. So we've selected those red areas by targeting them right down here with this slider, and then we've brought our hue a little bit to the right. Let's just bring that down just a little bit. And now what we have is our red areas in our face are basically completely corrected. Doesn't look weird, um, you know, it just looks a little bit more even, a little bit more flat, which is great. The one thing you want to do is be sure to, let's grab our brush tool, I mean, I paint black on my layer mask over lips because lips are supposed to be a bit more red. You don't want to make those white, but you can see what a difference that makes. It just kind of brings them back to the quote unquote correct skin tone. All right, so we're already off to a really nice start. Now, the next thing I'm going to do because it is, um, we're trying to get a specific look here is I'm going to desaturate our colors just a little bit. So we're going to go up to hue saturation and I'm just gonna bring my saturation down just a tiny bit, nothing crazy, but we're down like, let's go down to negative 10. Okay, so it's just bringing a little bit of that color out of there. Very nice. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a dodging and burning technique that um, you've never seen before. I know this because I just came up with it just now because I think it'll be cool. All right, <laughs> we're gonna use hue saturation to dodge and burn. Today will be the hue saturation day, why not? Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring my lightness down, um, but as I bring my lightness down, what you see happens, and this is often something that people uh, fall into the mistake of, it looks like gray is settling over your image, but um, that's because the saturation often comes down with the lightness. But I'm gonna try bringing the saturation up as well. So now, instead of it just looking like gray is over his face, it looks like the skin is just a little bit darker. Um, and the reason is that saturation. So that saturation is really, really important when you're doing this sort of technique. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command I on our layer mask. And with a nice big soft round brush, I'm gonna paint in some white on the areas in which I actually want to be affected. And this I'm focusing for the most part around the edges of our subject here. Um, because this is kind of the look of the portrait that we're going for. Now you don't have to do an incredibly great job at this because I'll show you in a little while, I'm gonna show you an even better technique of um, restricting this just to the shadows, okay? There we go. Now you can see it looks dirty, right? It just looks like, oh great, you put that gray stuff on his face, dirt, it looks horrible. I know that. <laughs> the reason is uh, we don't have enough saturation. So let's pump in a little bit more saturation. There we go. And you can see it starts to look like darker skin instead of dirt. Can you see like that's that's dirt and that is looking more like darker skin. Okay, so that's looking good, but there's one more thing we want to do and that's restrict this to the shadows. We don't necessarily want this visible where the highlights are because it just, it's really not going to look good. This is strictly for making shadows a little bit darker. Now to do that, it's really not that hard. What you want to do is you'll double click here on your hue saturation layer bringing up your layer style, okay? Now you have this thing on the bottom of your layer style called blend diff. This is like magic, it's perfect. Uh, all you have to do is hold down the alt or the option key and grab this little slider. It's gonna separate these two out. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make this layer not visible where the underlying layers are light. So it's basically going to say, if the underlying layer, if, if the portrait has a highlight, don't make this layer visible. So we're gonna bring those two and I'm just gonna take this from the right to the left. 
There we go. And just like that, you can see this layer has deleted. Well, it's not deleted. It's just gone away completely from the highlights and it's only visible in the shadows. So what we're left with is we still have that nice uh, burning effect. It still looks great, but instead of looking, let's just show you guys the before and the after with that because it's really pretty awesome. Um, instead of looking like you just painted on it with a paintbrush in Photoshop, see that's the before. I know it looks horrible and that's the after. So it really does a nice job of sticking to those highlights. Very cool and a nice portrait effect as well. Great. Now we can do the same thing. Sorry, sticking to the shadows, not the highlights. We're going to do the same thing with the highlights. I'd like to grab white with my paintbrush and we're going to paint here right in the middle of our portrait. That's where we want to draw a lot of attention to. There we go. This white section here in the middle. Very nice. Now we're going to basically do the exact same thing, except we're going to limit this so it's not visible in the shadows. So let's go ahead and double click on our layer, which brings up layer style. And I'm going to now hold the alt or the option key, and I'm going to go from the left to the right instead of the right to the left. So alt or option, and we're going to see, now we're going to bring this guy up as well. And what we're, we're going to get there is, there we go. That white that we just painted out is now only visible in the highlights. And we're just going to change our opacity till we get something that uh, looks, looks really good. There we go. And we can see how that kind of exaggerates that effect even more. Now, what we are going to do because we're trying to imitate a particular style is I also want these highlights, you know, that are here right in the, uh, right in the eyes. Let's make our brush a little bit harder. There we go. I want our highlights to really, really shine. So I'm going to paint over those highlights with we'll just paint with a nice big round brush right over there in the eyes as well. There we go. I know that looks horrible again, but double click on here. Uh, tell this not to be visible where the underlying layer is darker just where it's lighter and uh, what we're going to wind up with is a really nice lightning effect that looks a bit more natural. All right. Very cool. Let's apply a little bit of a blur to that. Um, I think just as people, we tend to overdo things when we're working in Photoshop. So if you are affecting eyes, um, usually that's an area I like to lower down the opacity just a little bit of. All right. Very cool. And we're all, we're looking, really, really good. Let's just do a couple of really quick things. I'm going to add a little bit of blue into the shadows. Um, that's going to contrast really nice with the uh, color of his skin. So we're going to go to our blue channel. Here we have a curves adjustment layer, and I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to the chat, to the shadows. Um, and let's go ahead and go to RGB and bring the brightness down. All right. The blue might not be exactly right. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and paint on our layer mask away from our subject's face. So I've just got a regular brush and I'm painting just where my subject's face is. And if the blue isn't the right blue, I think I'm going to add a little bit of green to it because it's just, it's a little bit off right now. Okay. So it, you can see it's affecting our background now, but what we're going to do, I think we're going to go to our green channel and just put a little bit of green in that as well. That's going to look just a little bit better. All right. So back to our layers, we can see there we go. Something that looks a little bit, um, you know, just a bit more refined. Okay. And then, you know, the last thing I really want to do is we're just going to add a no fanciness going on here. We're going to add a vignette to this image. I know we took it away in Lightroom, but I kind of liked it there. So we're going to add it back in Photoshop. Um, in part one, we removed the vignette, but here I am adding it back again. So um, I don't know. I kind of like vignettes. I know they're like technically wrong, but I think they can really help add some interest to photos. So um, there's that. Cool. Just a little bit of a vignette. All right, guys. And there you can see our Martin Scholler inspired portrait. Let's go ahead and shift click all those layers that we changed. So there's the before and there's the after. Really didn't take a long time and we got something that really does look quite a bit better. I'm very happy with it and uh, I hope you guys too. I hope you learned a lot. This was a big episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bring more awesomeness to you daily on flurn.com. Thanks a lot guys and I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.